Right, so in this video, I'm going to start talking about more um, methodologies about distancing stars. We're going to relate it back to one of the previous videos we talked about um, from a previous uh, video. Um, when we started, we introduced Stefan and Vine's law. Um, because those laws um, are, are pri primarily used uh, in astronomy to distance stars when we know something very specific about them. Um, and like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll come to how that works here in a second. So um, just to, as a brief reminder, as a brief reminder, we've got, um, say we've got a star uh, that we are observing here on Earth. And remember, this star has a set luminosity or a set power that it's giving off which is found by sigma a t to the power of 4. Obviously assuming that that's a perfect black body, um, obviously uh, you'll notice sometimes in, an, in this equation you have a little e in front of this for an emissivity uh, indicating how much of a factor it is like a black body. So it's a, a number between 0 and 1 basically. But um, for all these intents and purposes we treat stars as perfect black bodies. And as we suggested before, this the light or the energy that is given off, or the power actually in this case, that is given off does so in a spherical form. And that sphere, obviously spheres have, um, have a an area, a surface area. So that energy is spreading out over a surface area. So uh, if we call this distance uh, r, I'm just going to move Earth to be close up in my circle. So there's Earth at a distance r that we're potentially wanting to find out. Because remember, we want to find out distance star. In the previous video where we saw this, we actually used this um, to look at the size of stars. Um, but bear in mind, we can use this methodology to distance stars as well. So, we've got a distance here, and we've got a luminosity based on the size and the temperature. I will remind you that the temperature comes from Vine's law. Um, 0.023 is equal to... Um, Lambda t, I think, just remind myself of the equation there, uh, 2 9, apologies, 0.029. So that, that's obviously our, our peak wavelength, uh, our maximum wavelength from the um, black body radiation curve, which we've looked at in a previous video. Do go back and have a look at that um, to understand more about that. So that's where we get the temperature of stars from observing them. But now we, um, looking at this star, we know that we can pick up using like a CCD device. That's a, a device that, that's used in astronomy to effectively pick up uh, low levels of intensity from stars when staring at them. We can pick up an intensity. Now, let's remind you that intensity is an amount of power per unit area. So, an amount of power per unit area. Now, in astronomy, this isn't called intensity. It's called apparent brightness. Because it's how apparently bright it is to us when we're looking at it. So the apparent brightness is an indication of what kind of intensity we see and get from this star. So we can then infer that the power over the area, if we knew the area of this star, or the area that the star sheds its light over based on our distance, well, the area is power, sorry, power equals over the area, which is 4 pi r squared. OK? 
okay, where r is the distance to this um, this here, which actually means that the power, remember the power is found by the intrinsic power, the luminosity of the star, that that is then, we can then say that that's sigma a t to the power of 4 over 4 pi r squared. And that is equal to the apparent brightness. That's quite nice that I put it right there. That is equal to the apparent brightness. And this is actually an equation that's in your equation sheet. Um, and this is given as um, a slightly different version. Depending on your equation sheet, you might say this, or you might even see sigma a t to the power of 4 over 4 pi d squared, where d is the distance to this star. Okay? So when we, when we have our apparent brightness, and obviously you can replace this with an L as well, so actually I'll do that now as well, because that's the luminosity. And uh, this is sometimes given the letter B for apparent brightness. Don't ask me why, it just is. And so the apparent brightness is the power over the area over which this is spread out over. So you might be thinking, well, okay, I've seen this before, you saw this in the previous video. Um, but the point is here is we can measure this. And if we happen to be able to find out the luminosity through some other means, then we could potentially find the distance because we know the apparent brightness, we measure that here on Earth. If we have some other way of measuring the luminosity, then we can find the distance to that star. So you're asking me, well, how do we find that distance then? So we find it by using something called a Cepheid variable star. Cepheid variable star. And it's, as the name suggests, it's a star that luminosity varies. So imagine you're looking out into the night sky and you happen to see a star that is pulsating. And it's doing it so regularly. In fact, it's so regular and continuous that you can even time those changes of luminosity from its maximum to its minimum. And you can even plot a graph of it, of its intensity dropping up and down and up and down like that. Um, so it's pulsating. And then you happen to realize that you see another star that is really, really far away, but really small, and it happens to be pulsating the same way, in exactly the same amount. So you're looking at a star that's really, really far away, and a close star that are pulsating the same. And bear in mind about the close star, we know how far this star is away because it's in our galaxy, it's really close to us, only a couple of light years away, so we know how far it is away measured with parallax, and we can measure it, and it's, it's, it's good to go. And we know the size of it, we know its composition. Now, the thing is that it's pulsating is actually directly linked to its intrinsic luminosity. So the rate in which this star pulsates indicates that it has a very specific luminosity. So the pulsating, say it's pulsating once, uh, goes from max to minimum, max to min, in say one month. And we know the luminosity, we know we have a known luminosity because it's a really close star and we can tell everything about it. When we look at this star that's pulsating, it's pulsating the same. And what we've observed is, is this actual pulsation is the same rate. It happens once a month. And so our observations have led us to believe that this luminosity is exactly the same as the star of what we've seen right here, that was the close star. 
Well, that's really amazing because we now know the luminosity of a faraway star based on how much it's pulsating and how quickly it's doing that. So if we know the luminosity, we know the apparent brightness, we can then find the distance of that star, which is a really, really amazing method because now, whereas the parallax method was only able to measure things up to like 100 parsecs, now we're able to measure things up to thousands upon thousands of parsecs, now into the megaparsecs times 10 to the 6. We can measure how far other galaxies are away from us, which is a really, really useful thing to be able to do. And it's all due to the fact that these, we have a known close star that's pulsating the same as a faraway star. We know the luminosity of this, and that pulsation is a direct link to its luminosity. It tells you what the luminosity of the star is. And that was really a useful observation to have made in astronomy. So we can actually now distance the star using this method. So Cepheid variable stars are really, really impressive. I will just write that up here. So Cepheid variable stars. So a Cepheid variable star is one that pulsates with a, a known luminosity, and we can then look at another star that pulsates the same potentially in another galaxy, know its luminosity, measure its intensity here on Earth, and know the distance. So that is really, really uh, important method. In the next couple of videos, we'll start uh, honing in on some other factors to do with stars. We'll start looking at the different types of stars that are out there and uh, the kind of things that define their life and where they're going to go.